العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم فأما من خفض موازينه أي ومن شندع فأمه what happened to this person because the first person في عيشة الراضية he's going to have a long and nice عيشة نعيشة that's where the word عيشة comes from the noun Aisha right? That's the way Aisha. <laughs> She's looking at me. That's the way. That's where. That's where the name comes from. Because Aisha is means life. Okay, Aisha is life. Um, for who fi Aisha til radia is for Aisha til radia, and we wish that for Aisha and for the rest of us of this ummah, they live a good life. So the, for this one, the flip side, for ummu hawiya, Allah Akbar, may Allah save us from that. فأمه هاوية أي مأواه النار ومسكنه النار His destiny is the fire because هاوية is one of the names of the fire, the hellfire and in, with the Arabs you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said when Allah said that we reveal this in Quran عربي مبين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course he is Allah he knows he means what he says but right now it's become clear this is Arabi because that's the way the Arabs speak as well and this is what the Arabs do whenever something is of oft importance and greatness and value or yani, something is reverenced or feared to a high straight you know it's got more than one name do you know how many names the lion has? how much do you think? there you go I'm not sure the exact number is 200 but it's on the 100 it's definitely above a hundred. A hundred names for a lion. In the Arabic language, someone sent it to me, a whole list of the actual names, words that Allah, but some of them are hard to even pronounce. But the most we're familiar with is what? Asad? Huh? What do you mean all they teach you? In Madrasa or Arabic ibn Alhamdulillah. Al Asad? Huh? That's, that's his name, Asad Allah. No, because I thought it was one of the 200. I don't know. I don't know all the 200. I was like, Hamza, I was like, oh, I looked up. I was like, but no. Uh, no, well, another one, Laith. You've all heard Laith. Laith is another name of Asid. Call him Laith. A lot of, a lot of individuals, they like to call themselves Abu Laith. Allah <laughs> Musta'an. So, so how we are here. So why am I mentioning this? Because Allah Azza wa Jalla again taking the modes of the Arabs, giving us many names. Qari'a for your Mukiyama, Zalzala. Allah called it Al Haqa, the inevitable. Wa Ma Al Haqa, and what would make you know what the inevitable? Yani, what is the inevitable? Wa Ma Adraka Ma Al Haqa, what would make you know what the inevitable is? Allah said, Your Mukiyama. Allah said, Your Mudin. Because he's Rabbu, Maliki Yomuddin. Yomuddin, the day of Deen, eh, Hisab, the day of recompense. Yomud Tarabun, the day of the gathering, huh? Yeah, Yom Al Fasl. And oh, no, no, no. Al Al Ghashiyah. Allah called it many, many names. F following, telling you, hey, this is definitely Arabic. You know? Subhanallah. And when you look, you pay, pay attention. So Allah Azza wa he called, and that, so I said, it's for great things, things that are great in the Arab. They call it many names. Okay, the camel. Camel has many names. We heard some of them, right? In uh, thing, bin talabun, zakat, bin talabun, and all of this. And really, it's Jamal. Really, you know, I mean, some individuals say Jamal is actually not the name. It's actually called, it's called uh, uh, Naqa. You got Naqa, Naqa, bin talabun, uh, and on and on and on and on. You got Ba'ir. Many names, but the point is, they love camels, right? Sah. That's their riding beast. Uh, and, and anyone who wants to, I don't think you can translate that to the English language. Someone who loves their car, they go, I'm going to call you, you know my car, I love you. I'm going to call you car. I'm going to call you. You can't go beyond that. Riding vehicle. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he gave many names also for Jannah. And also he gave many names for hellfire. And from them is in this verse, Hawiya. What does Hawiya mean? A, he said, as Sidi said, Min Asma'iha al Hawiya, Takunu lahu bi manzilati al um al mulazama. Why Allah said before the Hawiya, Allah said, Ummuhu Hawiya. There's two interpretations for Ummuhu. 
Some is the actual interpretation of Umm. Whenever something is mentioned as Umm, it means the head of it. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Fatiha is what? Ummul Kitab is the head and the biggest affair and the pinnacle of the book. So an Umm is something that you say, his Umm. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called alcohol what? Ummul Fawahish or Ummul Khabaith. He called it the mother of all repugnant things. Because you get drunk, you can become a murderer, you can take on any role of a criminal in your drunk state. A'udhu billah, taq'ala ummak even fall upon your, a'udhu billah, your own family. La hawla wa la quwta illa billah. So it's the mother, that's why I said it's the mother, that's why the Usul Ulaman, when they explain this hadith, that's why it's the mother of all sins. So the point is, ummuhu hawiyah, the first interpretation, is that, yani, bi mulazimati li umm al mulazama, meaning hellfire, they're gonna be in hellfire, the relation, just like a person is in close, tight-knit relation to the mother. Allahu Akbar. Tight-knit relationship to hellfire? Look at the language that's being used here. You're going to have a... Ma, ma, no, as in this is what's the threat that a person is going to have. The relationship close to hellfire? That's a statement of our Lord. The second, and he, and he mentioned it, as Sidi mentions the proof for that understanding. كما قال تعالى إن إن عذابها كان غراما. That indeed its عذاب is غراما. قيل إن معنى ذلك فأمه دماغة هاوية في النار أي يلقى في النار على رأسه. And also the second opinion, the second is that what is meant is that because um is the head. One second, because Umm is the head, meaning Ummuhu Hawiya, meaning he's going to go into the hellfire head first. That's another meaning. He said, for Ummu, Dimaruhu, him being put into Hawiya, hellfire, a Yulqa, meaning being taken there, Finari ala Ratsihi, on his head. That's what it meant by Umm Namahi. Inna Adabaha, Kana Gharama. Let me get the exact uh, translation. But what's meant is the Sheikh is trying to use that as a from what we got in um the translation of Muhsin is that uh yeah, the inseparable inseparable inseparable. So just like you're inseparable from your mother, that's the truth he's trying to, the proof he's trying to use. Just like you're inseparable and you're close in relationship to the mother, in relationship you're close, meaning not like some people might say, okay, khalas, I mean, I don't talk to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. Talking about in terms of relation, blood ties, just like the mother's like, what? Right here when it comes to blood ties, right? Just like that, you'll be tied to the awd billah, may Allah forbid. May Allah forbid. Yeah, yeah, that's what we just said. That's the second. That's what we said. The second interpretation is head. They'll be taken. Oh, you mean like the head of the fire? Yeah. No, no, no. What you're doing now? You're you're combining. You're becoming a mashallah. You're doing qawl rajih bain al You're you're doing al yani al al amul bin nas awla min al ihmal. That's what you're doing. The act on the narration is better than to take both sides. Al jam'u, they say al jam'u all that. So normally you're trying to do um, reconciling. Well, here we're not, these are just two, because they don't really, they're not, these are, by the way, you learn when you go to Usul al Tafsir that the difference in some of the interpretations, really they're mentioning the same issue. As Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions in his Usul uh, of uh, Tafsir, he mentions the difference that we see in words, like for example, an individual would say, uh, for example, you say al khubz. Okay, you say khubz, which means bread. Okay, but then you can have which type of bread? So you can have the loaf, you can have different, but they're all same bread, right? Some of the tafsir of the sahab, that's how it is. You'll find Ibn Kathiri says, Ibn Abbas said this, and Mujahid said this, and then you're thinking, oh, but there's so much interpretation. Really, one is like he's saying loaf, and another one's saying bread, and it's the same thing. So here is not, and, and also there is, there is sometimes when it's different, but there's some, there's a tanawur. There's اختلاف التنوع, we learn, and اختلاف التضاد. There's different where they're completely opposed. 
One he interprets it to mean this, the other one says, for example, one says it's red or blue, black, and one says it's, it's white. Then there's tanawwa, there's different types, it's just different types. So for example, the hellfire, okay, so there's different interpretations for when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَعُوا أَضَعُوا الصَّلَوَاتِ وَاتَّبْعُوا الشَّوَاتِ فَصَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّا What is غَيَّا? Some said, oh, it's the, it's the dirty excrements and pus and filth that comes off the people of the hellfire. That that's going to be the state of the one who destroys his salah. And others have said it's actual health, a place in hellfire. Oh, no, no, you get it. But really, it all means punishment. So it's just different types. So here, they're saying um is in, in correlation. Other one, here he's saying he's going to be, they're going to be put, because the um, because the word um can be used as head, head of something, head of all sins that was mentioned, the mother of all sins, meaning he's going to be taken head first. Okay, the point is, he's going to be put in, the individual that's like that, may Allah forbid that that's us, he's going to be put in there. Then Allah says to finish off, What is this? What would make it? What would make you known? He says, This type of language, again, this type of language, because the Quraysh, what they said, they say, he's speaking in non-Arabic. Allah Azza wa continues to establish the proof that this is definitely Arabic. Again, speaking the same lingo. To say that, to ask this type of question like that, this is, he says, is to show you the greatness. This questioning, this form of questioning is used, and Allah says it many times. Give me one, guys. ما أدراك like what would make you known what your muddin is I've got a list I've got quite a few Allah Akbar there's like a, I've got I've got 12 results وما أدراك ما الحاقة what would make you know what حاقة is وما أدراك ما سقر again سقر okay that's the name of the hellfire وما أدراك and some said it's actually a place in hellfire وما أدراك ما يوم الدين the day of separation. To tell you, so what would make you know? This is a way of, when you speak like that, the Arabs, he says, This is to glorify its state. Then Allah explained it. The Sa'di says, by explaining and answering the question himself, he says, Narun Hamiya. A nar, which is Hamiya, which is a Shadidul Harara, very hot. Qadzadat Hararatuha ala Hararati Nari Dunya bi Sabi'ina Dhafan. That it is increased or gone above, as the Prophet explained in a hadith, authentic, that it's 70 times the heat. Of the hellfire, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Yani, subhanallah, some horrific descriptions. Horrific descriptions, and we believe in all of it. We believe in all of it. Allah, yaf'alu ma yasha. He does what He wills. And Allah said in the Quran, la yaslaha illa al ashqa. No one would enter the fire except the most wretched. Except the most wretched. People can enter the hellfire for something small. For something small, right? Allah really knows who to put into this hellfire. We don't look at, we don't look at what's small. Because some people may have shuck and doubt. Does Allah need to punish them that much? But and all of this type of shubuhat, kalam, constantly questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, Allah Azza wa has established so much of his deen that you're in at all. In beauty of this religion, you still doubt. Not everything is this, this obsession with knowing the exact and details of everything I see in his believing, as they say. And they're saying the same people who breathe oxygen. Hey, class, you don't breathe, I believe in oxygen then. You can't see oxygen. So, yani Allah Azza wa Jal, ultimately Allah knows. Who's, but if someone says, you know, oh, but, you know, they've done something smaller. Ultimately what you're doing is you're saying, no Allah, you shouldn't have put them in here, but you should put them in there. Who are you? So ultimately, that's ultimately what you're doing, sah? You're saying, no Allah, I mean, as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, كَانَ لَا يَسْتَنْزِهُ مِنَ الْبَوْلِ 
An individual was punished in the hellfire too. An individual, a grave. The Prophet ﷺ, he said he's been punished right now. Two individuals. Yeah, the two people in the grave, they'll be punished. And the Prophet ﷺ said, They're not punished for a great deed. One of them, One of them never used to wipe himself, cleanse himself after urine. If he used to cleanse himself after urine, meaning clean himself, especially with water. And the other one, كان يمشي بالنميمة, صح? As the hadith you're all familiar with. He used to go around Namima, spreading tales and rumors. And Namima is actually meant, as the ulama have explained, to spread something with that intention of causing fasad, corruption. What an evil individual. The point is, the Prophet said, they're not exactly kabira. Even those sins, you shouldn't think... Oh, it's just, they are small and evil, but you shouldn't just think it's a small, because the moment you start thinking, oh, it's just a small thing, you've made it big now for that belief. So the point is, okay, Allah has to why do people get punished for just guy who didn't wipe himself properly yet? Ultimately, what you're saying is, no, 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 I think that's the consequences. So you tell us, oh human, the reason why I'm mentioning this, because there's some individuals who doubt their religion, because they hear these cat catastrophic Punishments, Allah says, Allah could we'll swap their skins, make it thick skin. Allah says, so they can taste the punishment. All of it is a deterrent. We can talk about the barakah and the fawaid in that. And wallahi, had that not existed, people would slaughter each other. If these threats didn't exist, people would slaughter each other, take the rights of each other. It's from the rahmah of Allah that the hellfire exists. For any Muslim who's holding fire and not taking revenge and killing people and doing things, is maybe because some of that punishment he's scared of. There's nothing that's holding the earth from shaking. It's that threat for the few that abide by it. Otherwise, everybody will just be, you know what? Khalas. If there's, no, there's no hellfire. Khalas. Take it out on this individual. <laughs> so you have to hush yourselves, these individuals, and know that Allah, Azza wa what you're ultimately doing is not Allah. Okay, you tell us to what degree should a person be punished? Um, punish him for 10 years. Who said that's justified? <laughs> Yani, subhanallah, this is, this is again, yani, qillat al-adab ma'allah. This is bad manners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we run out of time. So the point is Allah Azza mentioned, narun hamiya and nar. So this is to scare. And also, also, why do the punishment? Why, so why do the sin? So an individual might say, oh, but you've been warned. Say, khalas, don't, don't do it. You've been warned anyway. Sah? Imagine there's uh, realms of signs. What do we have in train tracks? Don't step. Electrocution, this, that. Imagine you have further barriers. And even an electrical, let's just exaggerate right now, yeah, in our imagination. An electrical, يعني, like in the prisons, electrical يعني, fences. Guy jumps all over that, gets under that, goes, jumps over, still goes into the tracks, gets electrocuted. Who would we blame? Him. Furthermore, people will cuss and diss him. Not only that, imagine he died, people say, Yo, nonsense, Yo, I can't believe you. What a fool, isn't it? Anybody who lands in the hellfire is like that. Allah's mercy, Allah's forgiveness, good deeds, bit of punishment. None of that still does. Allah says, لا يصلح إلا الأشقى. No one enters the fire except the ashqa, the most wretched. Subhanallah. So, you, you know, you can't have these. Allah knows what he's talking about. So here, Narun Hamiya is a yani scorching shadid al-harara. Higher than, as the Prophet ﷺ said, 70 times of the fire of this earth. نقف عند هذا الحد والله تعالى عالم ما الله عز وجل help us to benefit from that what we heard. Make us from the people of سعادة and take us away from becoming from the people of شقاوة. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شدوا لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك.